guys. So today's video is going to be another favorites and fails. I realize right now I'm not in my normal filming location. We'll get there in a second, but I'm currently actually editing this video that you're watching right now. And I realized that um, I never filmed an intro. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking. I usually will film my intros towards the end of what I'm discussing just because I don't know sometimes what direction the content is going to go in. But um, yeah, completely forgot. So I just wanted to jump on here and say hi to you guys. So hi how are you hope you guys are well and today's video is going to be a lot of um lots of makeup picks lots of skincare of course more spfs because you know S spf has been the name of the game recently one spf that you guys actually recommended that i've really been loving two big spf fails that can oh man the the price of these spfs i cannot get over and just the quality just wasn't there so we'll talk about those a hair tool um yeah, lots of good things. Even a summer drink. I figured I'd mix it up a little bit this month and throw in um, a little seltzer that I've been enjoying. So you guys will hear about that in the end. Not sponsored, by the way, but I just thought it'd be something fun and different. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video and let's just go ahead and jump right into it. Let's mix it up a little bit and start off with my makeup favorites. So my first lip favorite has to go to this Buxom. This is actually a lip liner, but I've been using this as essentially a lipstick. The Powerline Plumping Lip Liner in the shade Rich Rose. I've actually been using this as an all over lip product because it's a thicker lip liner and it also has this brush tip end. So you can kind of line your lips and then fill them in and then use the brush to smooth it all out. It's really just as effective if you use your fingertips but I love this color it's so pretty and it lasts such a long time this is like a peachy coral pinky nude looks really pretty on the lips I wore this in the video I'll link above I can't remember which one it was off the top of my head but I know I've been wearing it a lot recently and I usually go for more of like an understated pinky nude but this adds a little bit more of a brightness more fun for you know spring and summer so I really enjoyed this and I just wanted to give this some love because I know with the fall coming I'm sure I'll go to some spicier lip colors but I love this all summer long really nice and then my other makeup favorite was this essence you better work mascara you guys know I've talked about this in the past I think I even did I did I dedicated a whole review video to this when this first launched I love this mascara it does not budge whatsoever and the days I don't wear it I really miss it so this is meant for a it's a gym proof and waterproof mascara and I am telling you I can't attest to the fact of working out because I really I haven't worked out. I really need to get back to that. But, you know, life gets busy. Three children, a little baby. It, it's a lot. <laughs> and it's so hot out. Oh, my gosh. I really need to invest in a treadmill. We've been so close to buying one, but I can't see myself putting out $1,000 when we could just walk outside and go for walks and take our kids for walks. <laughs> let me know if you have one and if you use it a lot and you think one's worth it, but other, I don't know. All right, let me stop going off on tangents. Sorry guys, I'm all over the place today. Um, but this mascara is so great. It really stays put. Bottom line, if you're outside in the heat, it's not going to budge. It's a nice mascara that does the trick. It separates your lashes. You don't get a ton of thickness from this, but the length is really impressive. So I would highly recommend this, especially if you have more watery eyes, which I do. This does not budge even with my frequent tearing. So yeah, beautiful mascara. Love this. I mentioned that a lot, I know, but I definitely think it's worth it. And it's five bucks. You can't beat the price. Another product I've been using a ton is the Tarte Ultra Creamy Concealer. I was in love with the original Shape Tape. I know a lot of people complained about the dryness, but I never felt like I wanted it to be creamier, but wow, now I know what I was missing. This is such a beautiful, like, cushiony, pillowy feel underneath the eyes. I like that it doesn't completely set, so you can pat it out throughout the day. I will say that this does, it creases slightly. It's not completely crease proof, but the fact that I can pat it out and work with it, I appreciate that. I don't like the concealers that completely set because I feel like those accentuate fine lines. I can't go for a completely matte concealer, and this is definitely not a matte concealer. It's more on the satin side. I love the finish. I love the coverage. It's just enough. Doesn't look heavy it looks like your skin love this and wow you guys this sunscreen this is by the brand Cots or coats I'm not exactly sure how you pronounce this brand this is the flawless complexion tinted SPF of 50 this is a complete mineral sunscreen so it has a tint to it and it reminds me a lot of the dermatology tinted sunscreen the same exact tint that same neutral tint but it's so dewy on the skin it's a really nice really flattering this isn't super hydrating I will say it does give a, a very like dewy effect and I know a lot of the reviews said that um, people didn't like the greasy look they were ultimately saying it was too dewy now I appreciate that because my skin is on the drier side I like that glow 
but I love that sheen. I think it looks so pretty on the skin. Now it does feel heavy. It feels a little heavier than the Dermatology and I do think the Dermatology feels more moisturizing. My skin does feel a little on the dry side by the end of the day, but it still gives this dewy sheen. The price is great and you get a lot for your money. You're getting 2.5 ounces in here, which is a lot for especially facial screen. Most of them are 1.5 to 1.7. Um, the formula is really nice. So thank you to you guys. I know a lot of you guys recommended this brand and I really enjoy this let me know if there's another product by this brand that you like there's a ton of products by them um, a lot of sunscreen options so let me know other ones but this looks like it was the most highly rated and the most um, the best seller from this brand and yeah the results definitely back up the performance this is a great sunscreen love this not uh, stinging at all it doesn't sting the eyes not irritating it's just nice calming just hydrating enough um, I would like it if it was a little more hydrating but just enough for me so yeah really like this sunscreen by Cots Coats Cots let me know in the comments next up this dry shampoo by the brand Verb first off can I say how sad I was that they discontinued their powder form that was the best product ever and it lasted forever these aerosol cans I fly through them so this is pricier this is $18 for this aerosol can I already feel like I'm halfway through this but I think the formula is well worth it it's just powdery enough but not too powdery you know some of these dry shampoos just are too chalky looking they feel heavy in the hair this is very light let me show you what this looks like on the hair and it doesn't leave that like ashy look especially if you have darker roots like me it has like this powdery light fresh smell too I enjoy the smell it doesn't feel heavy on the hair at all and it just gives a fresh out of the shower look and it doesn't make your hair feel like textured or sticky um, just light and clean I've really been enjoying this this is even um, making me put away my cornstarch these days <laughs> I don't know if you guys heard me talk about did I ever, ever even mention that on my channel I might not have my favorite beauty hack use cornstarch in your roots and I'm telling you it works even better than all these pricier dry shampoos if you look at the main ingredient most of these have rice starch or cornstarch in them so grab some cornstarch from your pantry and it's gonna work just as well as these pricier sprays but if you want something that smells light and fresh um, this one is really nice I gotta say but let me know if you guys want a beauty hack video I feel like I have so many um, tricks underneath my sleeve that I haven't shared before so let me know if you're into that I feel like that was big like five Five years ago five ten years ago in the YouTube world to do these hack videos but you don't see them a ton recently but yeah let me know what you guys think oh and then I have another lip favorite too which I forgot to mention in the beginning this lip gloss by Wayne Goss this is in the shade tulip this is a beautiful peachy nude that is so flattering I really enjoy it topped over other lipsticks and it's and on its own it looks really pretty also it doesn't wash you out at all it gives just enough punch of color it's very pigmented super glossy and the gloss stays put it doesn't move around it's just sticky enough I gotta admit my hair does get stuck in my gloss every so often when I wear this but no big deal because it does have that lasting power and I just like the color so I cannot recommend this tulip gloss by Wayne Goss enough I like that it has little shimmer gold flecks in here let me do a swatch for you guys you see how it reflects the light it's really pretty I love this gloss I definitely want to try more products by him. I've been slacking in the makeup department recently. I've just been sticking to some of my old favorites and I don't know. I just haven't really been interested in a lot of new makeup. Let me know if there's any new releases that you guys had your eyes on, but yeah, I don't know. I like my um, I like my cosmetic CC cream, my Charlotte Tilbury lipstick. Yeah, kind of boring in the makeup department over here recently. But yeah, that is a lip gloss that I've been reaching for more frequently that I liked before, but I put away for a while and I just rediscovered it recently. Another sunscreen that I've been loving is this one by Garnier, and this is the Brightening Serum Cream in the Pina C version. I reviewed um, the other two before. Um, the watermelon I hated. That pilled on my skin so badly. I hated that heavy feel too um, and the canopy one is great that one is fragrance free if you're looking for a fragrance free option but I just started trying this and I love this so it's really refreshing on the skin it does have a light scent now that I'm talking through this review right now I feel like maybe I did touch on this before on my channel but it's fine it's worth the mention anyway because it really is a great SPF that is well worth the money it's lightweight on the skin it's a full chemical sunscreen so it has a nice light formula you're not gonna get any cast with this whatsoever it's very hydrating it comes out in almost like 
a light milky lotion that rubs into the skin really easily and I love the smell is really nice like it's slightly floral, but it's very, very faint. They didn't overdo it, and it doesn't smell at all like a chemical sunscreen. Just so pleasing. And really why I wanted to mention this again, I use this on the beach a lot, and it was just a burst of like refreshing moisture, and I think maybe the smell kind of enhanced that experience also, but honestly, I think it's the nice like light moisture to this. Like I'd rather apply this on the beach than I would this tinted sunscreen because this is heavy and like filled with silicones. This does feel heavy on the skin. I love the result of this, but I would use this more as like an everyday SPF where I'm just running out the door, running some errands, where I'm not planning to sweat a lot because this does feel heavy and if I'm hot, I want something lightweight like this guy. So I have really been enjoying this. This is the Garnier Pinacy. And then this uh, lip booster by Paula's Choice. This is their hyaluronic and peptide lip booster. This has squalene in here. There's also cocoa butter and peptides. So peptides we know are going to plump out the lips, hopefully help with smoothing some fine lines. Ultimately, you're just going to get some nice hydration with this product. When I first started using this, I was underwhelmed, I got to tell you. I'm like, mm, this is $29 for lip product. I get some moisture from this, but I kept re-reaching for this, and I did really notice a difference in the smoothness of my lips and just the overall like plumpness of my lips. I just felt like they looked more youthful. So whether or not it's actually smoothing things out there from you know these peptides, or if it's just because of the extra hydration. I love this silky formula and I like the hydrating formula to this. Really nice. Gotta love Paula's Choice. I love, there's not too many products of hers that I haven't gotten along with. I need an update of Paula's Choice haul, by the way. I might look for a best and worst from Paula's Choice coming up. I did one last year, but I feel like I'm due. I need. I want to try some more of our moisturizers. Um, but yeah, this is a really nice product. Oh, by the way, I did get this in PR. Nothing else that I have talked about so far was PR. So now let's talk hair tools. I actually, I asked you guys over on my Instagram to recommend a hair dryer to me because I was in the market for one. And you guys sent over some great recommendations. I ended up though, just buying this like cheapy Conair <laughs> hair dryer. I've never been one to spend a ton of money on hair dryers and I knew I needed a curling iron too so I didn't want to put out a ton of money over there on a hair dryer but um, I ended up finding this budget-friendly curling iron. This is under $30. I believe this is $29.99 and this is by Conair. This is the Infinity Pro. This is the 1.25 barrel and I just think first of all how pretty. I love the gold barrel, I love the gray, but minus the aesthetics, everything else about their curling iron is what I want in a curling iron. It has a super, super long cord, which is what I need, and I really like the, that the barrel is long, so for my longer hair, it just makes it so easy to twirl this through. And also, this skinnier handle, too, makes it really easy to work with. The clip is really nice, it doesn't tug your hair. Um, I like that it has this little plasticky, um, little shelf for it to sit on and it has an automatic shut off. I need that in my life. I can definitely be ditzy when it comes to leaving stuff behind. I'm known for leaving my phone at work. My keys are everywhere. I can never find my keys. <laughs> um, and I have been known to leave things on at the house. As a matter of fact, my husband, his nickname to this day is Iron Man <laughs> because back in the day, this we're going back like 10, 15 years. I've been with my husband since high school, but we were out with our friends one night and I could not stop thinking about the iron that I most likely left on at the house and the sweet man that he is he actually left the bar and there was an I believe there was an Eagles game on I think it was football Sunday he left football Sunday to go check the iron at home for me what a scene he is. I mean, granted, he was probably scared to death that I was going to burn down the house, but that's besides the point. <laughs> um, but to this day, his fantasy football name is Iron Man because of that story. So yeah, I'm definitely known for being a little careless with things. So when I saw that this had an automatic shut off, I'm like, yes, I need that in my life. And um, so besides that function, it's just a really great performing uh, curling iron. I just love that it gives you those beachy waves. It's really effortless. It's easy to use. It's not the lightest curling iron. It does have some weight to it, but in a way it kind of helps with with the use of this in a way in a weird way how this is weighted but really nice iron I love this I'm so happy with this purchase I did get this at Ulta too by the way and I'll, I'll link it down below I think it was even on sale the other day I saw that it was five dollars off I think it, it might have been originally forty dollars but yeah I'll leave the link down below all right and then before we get to the fails let's talk some alcohol <laughs> it's been a long year guys and this girl needed some 
delicious summer drinks. Any seltzer fans out there, I don't know about you guys, but I think these are so light and refreshing in the summer. I usually like High Noons. I was never a White Claw fan. I feel like they have a weird aftertaste and I feel like they're almost too sweet. I don't know, they have a weird bite to them. But I've discovered the Michelob Ultra Organic Seltzers in a cucumber lime flavor. There's also a prickly pear flavor and a, oh, it was like a, I think spicy pear. They come in a multi-pack, but Oh my gosh, these are so good. They're not super sweet. I have such a sweet tooth when it comes to everything else in life. I'm a cookie fan, I'm a cake fan, but when it comes to my drinks, I don't like a sweet drink. I don't know, it's, it's kind of weird, I know. But these are nice because they're light and refreshing and they don't have that sweetness to them. If you like LaCroix seltzers, these it literally tastes like you're drinking a LaCroix. You can't even taste the alcohol in these. They're only 80 calories, they're just nice and light and I thought I should share. So yeah. Anyway, I wanted to share something kind of fun that I've been liking. So let me know your favorite seltzers down below and what summer drinks you've been enjoying. But all right, let's get back to the skincare, which I'm sure is what most of you guys are here for. Let's go into the big fails. These sunscreens, oh my gosh. First of all, can we talk about how much money these are? This one was uh, NPR, Pharmacy uh, Green Defense Daily Mineral Sunscreen. This is a broad spectrum of 30. You guys know I love me some Pharmacy Beauty. I can't get over that moisturizer. But this sunscreen, I do not think is worth the money. It's $36 and it has a pretty strong white cast to it. It does eventually dissipate, but I don't know. Ultimately, I just don't think the formula is really worth the money for me. I just don't think there's anything special to it. It is quick absorbing and it doesn't leave a tackiness, but you can see there's a white cast. Still kind of rubbing it in here. It feels really silky on the skin. I do, will say the texture is really nice, but I wish it was a little bit more hydrating and that cast was just too, too intense for me for a $36 SPF. Let's just say it like it is. So I feel like pharmacy, unfortunately, I did not, I was not a fan of this SPF. All right, and then last but not least, this is the biggest fail for the month. I think it's more of a fail than this guy. The formulas are pretty equivalent, but this price is $50 USD. I did put out my own money for this and I was very disappointed. Um, oh man, $50 is a lot to spend on an SPF when there's so many great drugstore options, so many great Korean sunscreens out there. But I'm like, you know what, Kate Somerville, I like a lot of her products and I was ex not excited to spend the money. Who's excited to spend $50? But I don't know, I thought the product I would get would be well worth the money and I have to tell you, I was really disappointed. This has an even stronger white cast than and the pharmacy. It does have like a liquidy formula that absorbs pretty quickly, but the cast was way too intense for the price. $50 for this? Like what? Even more intense of a cast than the pharmacy. I've worn it under makeup plenty of times and it sits really nicely, but the cast is too intense on its own. And if I'm spending $50 on a sunscreen, I want to be able to slap it on whenever, under makeup, without makeup. Um, but yeah, it just doesn't have, there's just nothing special to these for the money is I guess what I'm trying to say. So really disappointed. I mean, $36, you guys know I've talked about pricier sunscreens on here. If the formula is worth it, it's, it's going to make me excited to apply it. I will spend the money on an SPF. You're not even getting a skin brightener in here. There's no niacinamide or anything like that. So these two sunscreens were two fails for the month for me. But that is it as far as fails go. I really didn't have um, any other products that I was disappointed in. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. This was fun. I love a favorites and fails. Let me know what products you guys have been enjoying. Any big fails for the month? What were your favorite SPFs for the summer? I always love some SPF recommendations. Let me know which ones you have been reaching for most frequently. And yeah, just thank you guys for being here. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.